Here now is Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells with Talk to Tom. You look up at the sky and you see the stars. Well, now you can see them like never before. We're coming to you from Seminole State College of Florida. We're in the Emil Bueller Planetarium with the director of the planetarium. This is my new friend, Derek Demeter. Derek, good to see you, man. Good welcome, to see you. Welcome yeah, to Talk yeah. to Tom. And All I'm right. so excited to be here at the planetarium. Tell me about the planetarium. It's, it's actually open to the public, right? It is. So we are open usually on select Fridays of mm -hmm. the month. And we showcase all kinds of really cool astronomical and cosmological events in the planetarium. Okay, when you say all kinds of cool, what if, if people come here, I've been in a planetarium several times, different places, but I've never been to this one. So if people come here from the public, what can they expect? What do you do? So our most common show that we do is called Central Florida Nights, and mm -hmm. that is essentially a guided tour of the night sky. Awesome. So we take a look at what currently is in the sky, constellations, planets, if there's any meteor showers, or things like, uh, you know, uh, lunar and solar eclipses, or any big yep. event that happens. We showcase that and tell people what to do. And then after the show, my favorite part, too, is they actually get to go outside with one of our telescopes and see some of the things they learned in the planetarium. So you see it here, and then you go outside and you teach it again there? That's right, yeah. Okay, well, you mentioned uh, solar and lunar eclipses. There's a big solar eclipse coming up, very similar to what we had Back in 2017, I guess it 2017, was? 2017, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's going to be another totality across a large part of the country. Do you think that's, that's the reason why this kind of stuff's becoming more popular? I've been getting a lot of questions about it. i got to believe you have, too. Oh, yes. In fact, uh, uh, I've been on a tour for quite a while, giving programs about this eclipse, and it's, uh, it's always fascinating. It's something that's fairly rare. I mean, we see mm -hmm. lunar eclipses a lot more than we do solar eclipses. Right. But solar eclipses... You know, especially here in the United States, are very rare. In fact, in 2045, uh, yeah, that's actually my kind of weight plan, my exercise plan. But <laughs> there's going to be an eclipse. It's going to go right over Orlando, Florida, in August. 12th, a solar? A solar, yeah. In 2045. 2045, August so 12th. 2045. We've only got to hang on another 20. That's right. 21 years. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, they, you... they don't really happen very often. So no. when people see these things happen. It gets them excited, but also it's. I mean, how often do you get to see the sun with just your eyes, right? When that moon, when the moon literally completely covers the sun, we actually can take those glass, solar glasses off, and look up at the sky and see that. And that's just a truly remarkable thing. Well, it's happened to me once. Did you go to Totality last time? I did. Yeah, I went to Idaho actually. Idaho. Yeah. Okay. Where did Where did you go? Uh, just south of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, in a okay. town called Greenbrier, Tennessee, nice, my hometown. Nice. All right. So yeah. So. Uh, it, this one's a little bit more towards like the Illinois side. It's and, Texas and so, all the yeah. way up to Toledo. I yeah, that's right. That's Toledo all. all the way actually into upstate New York near Buffalo. So, wow. um, so there's a lot of parts of the United States. And generally what's really nice is that most people here in the United States are within about a half day to a day's drive mm -hmm. to totality. So I've been telling people all the time to just, if you can, get out and take that drive and find some place to watch it. You know what's weird? Um, this is... Not a question we have scripted, but I went back home to my hometown to watch it because I knew it was coming. All of my relatives were like, really? You came home for this? And I'm like, well, yeah. And then my mom, who wanted to see me very badly, was like, well, I'm glad you came home, but I can't believe you came home just for the eclipse. I'm like, mom, it's... So she watched it with me outside, and she burst into tears. It's, it's an emotional, it is. moving, it's weird. When you, when you are wearing the glasses and the moon takes over and it goes woof, dark and there's a little shimming on the ground, it's just very strange. Temperature drops, you hear birds, you hear insects. It's just a really incredible. And one thing that people don't understand, if you do get a really clear sky, you have a 360 degree sunset. It was weird. Which is just wild. It was, so, a, it was yeah, one yeah. of the... Best things that's ever happened. And the best part about this eclipse is actually double the length of the other one. It's about four minutes or so uh, than the one in 2017. So you're... So you'd be in totality longer. Totality, a little bit longer. The one in 2045, six minutes and 30 seconds here in, here Orlando, in Orlando. In Orlando, yeah. If it's so not be cloudy. one of the longest eclipses in a long time. And you time. said it was what month? August, I know, yeah. August 12th, which means that we have to hope... That we don't have a hurricane. Okay, I don't mean to, to, to narrow you down on the math here. What's the exact time? Do we know? 
I think it's in the afternoon sometime. But here's the thing. Think about this. And this is my wildest dream. I know we don't really want this to happen, but this is just one of the things. Could you imagine if we did have a hurricane go through and during the eye wall experience have the eclipse happen at the same time? Wouldn't that be... Uh, that might not be a good idea. Yeah, I don't, I don't think... Di- <laughs> You're not getting me to agree to this, Derek. We're not doing this. All right, let's talk... I, I love astronomy. And astronomy kind of led me uh, in my first university. I was so stupid I had to go to college twice. Oh, okay, so... First time I graduated college was at Western Kentucky University. Second time was Ohio State. But at Western Kentucky, we had a great planetarium. And it was astronomy that turned me on to, like, the planets, the weather, and got me going down this scientific oh, track. What got you going? So I actually got a chance to visit the John Young Planetarium back at the original Science Center when I was six years old. You know, the one that where the Orlando Shakespeare Theater is now. Okay. And my dad took me to a planetarium show, and it was all about the planet Mars. Oh. And kind of like with you at college, I realized that Earth was not the only place out there. There were planets that had you know rocks and weather and, and all this stuff, and there could be possible life there. And you know we're sending robots there, and it just all these things, and that oh, led me to that rabbit hole of you know what what's else out there is there what other planets are out there what other gal you know it's just you know how it goes it's just mm-hmm. that that, that Never gateway Get you going. That, that gateway allowed me to to really start getting into it but the other thing is i you know thankfully i i have grown up here and grew up here in the florida area and i got i've always seen the shuttle launches and other rocket launches so being close to the space coast is also another motivator for me to you know, wonder what they're doing and hearing about the, the various different instruments that the shuttle would launch up into orbit, the Hubble Space Telescope, all these things that, uh, you know, were being launched payloads from the space shuttle program. So all that combined just really got me into it. And what really, really sealed the deal for me was when Comet hale You remember hale No, the big yeah, comet, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the Comet hale seeing that through a telescope for the first time, that just, that just sealed the deal for me. And, um, when kids come in... Mm-hmm. Do you show them Jupiter like this? Yes. So usually we start off with showing them what they would see in the real sky, and then we fly to the planet Jupiter, and the kids oh, just cool. lose it when we get so <laughs> close to it. And the best part about this, too, is I'm actually controlling this on a video game remote right here, which is really our controller. Yeah, it looks video like an Xbox. Yeah. And it is an Xbox controller. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, as we zoom in here, we can fly around. Of course, right now we're looking at the great red spot and uh, I figured that would be appropriate for, you know... Giant hurricane. Giant, giant storm, yeah. 450 mile an hour winds. The storm itself is about the size of planet Earth. Could you imagine that? It's no. wild, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and it's been around for 350 years. So For the whole uh, time we've been looking at it, it's there. It's been there, exactly. Never died and uh, it is shrinking a little bit, but we think that because it, it takes about 12 years for Jupiter to orbit around the sun, it has it goes through like a cycle Schooling. Where, it, where it kind of shrinks a little bit. And then, you know, as Pulses. it gets kind of into its summer months, it starts to kind of expand up again. So but that's another thing that's really cool about this system, too, is I can go anywhere in time. If you wanted to go back you know, 500 years in the past and see what the sky looked like, we can do Oh, that. really? Yeah. Any date? Any date. Any date you want. Wow. What's really cool is uh, one of the other positions I serve under is the um, executive secretary for the International Planetarium Society. And we actually work with the Pink Floyd band me- current band members to put together the 50th anniversary for Dark Side of the Moon. And we are showing that program in the planetarium. And we actually work with the band to produce that show. So this show is the only ever show that was signed and sealed and approved by the band members. And how do you play it here? Uh, it's, it's actually, that's the easiest part of my job is literally uh, there's this thing called Full Dome Shows and there's Pink Floyd and literally I just got to play the, 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 the play button. Awesome. So, yeah. So when does it play? When are you going to show that? So uh, we are actually doing, we'll probably do a couple of more. So we only have, so Pink Floyd wanted to only um, do their 50th anniversary show for a full year. So we Mm -hmm. have until June 30th. So we're probably going to be probably doing a couple more of these in like mid-May and maybe sometime in June. I will be doing another set of those events. So we we do them. And what's really cool about this is that uh, we actually use some of our fundraising money for this show, so it's actually a show that when we when we do Pink Floyd, the money directly goes back to the planetarium, which is really cool. Okay, what are you seating here? Uh, right now, we have roughly about seventy seats total in wow. the planetarium, uh, and you know that's the other thing is that you know this the history of the planetarium is that this used to be a 
a large lecture hall that was converted into a planetarium. And uh, it's, not un- it's not uncommon anymore for this to sell out every time we do a public show. Well, I would think, yeah, if you're going to do yeah. Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, yeah, yeah. It gets, uh, the it old, gets sold the out old pretty quickly. Pink yeah. Floyd, yeah. people are going to come. Oh, yeah, and it's amazing. <laughs> and what's really cool about this show compared to some of the other older shows is mm-hmm. that a lot of the visuals are very space-themed. So you don't necessarily have to be a like total you know, fan of Pink Floyd to enjoy the show. And so here we have Saturn. And what's really cool about the rings of Saturn is if you went from one side of the rings to the other, that's about the same distance as traveling from the Earth to the moon in terms of the distance. Between so it's about 300,000 miles? Uh, about 280,000, okay. yeah. So it's a little bit wider than the distance of the moon, but it's pretty close, enough to, for most people to, to understand that. It's crazy. But uh, well, you know, what's really cool about this system is that it create, we have a model-based system where if we fly through the rings of Saturn, <gasps> eventually awesome. you'll be able to see the actual individual pieces. And what's really cool about these individual rocks and ice in the rings of Saturn is that the average piece of those... Rocks and ice in the Ring of Saturn is about the size of a, of a bus. So, you know, think of those Lynx oh, buses wow. that you see. Those are essentially the size Each of these. Size of about the size of that, yeah. And, and, and these rings have been about, they formed roughly about 300 million years ago. So in astronomical terms, they're fairly recent. New. Yeah, they're fairly recent. And we think that there, what happened was is Saturn right now, for the current moon count of Saturn is about four, or 147 moons. So 147 moons. And a lot of those moons, as they were forming around Saturn, uh, it was kind of like, you know, pool. Collided. And they collided with each other, or some got knocked into further into Saturn, and Saturn's gravity ripped basically them ripped them apart. Exactly. And what's interesting is that uh, the Cassini spacecraft that went to Saturn uh, found out that uh, a lot of the ring material is actually being absorbed in the atmosphere. And scientists have mathematically modeled the rate at which the rings are slowly breaking Someday down. they go apart. And about 100 million years is about when most of the rings are going to be pretty much gone. So we'll just have a very small, thin ring system, similar like Uranus and Neptune. And Obviously, we won't be here for that. We won't be, be here, sad. exactly. But you know, th- we are very fortunate to live at a time when we can see these really awesome, beautiful rings of Saturn there. So not only can we do space stuff here in the planetarium, we can actually look at Earth science. And actually, that's one of the biggest other disciplines that we teach in the planetarium is Earth science. And what you're seeing here is, is the uh, cloud water visualization. So we're looking at you know, the, the water vapor in the atmosphere. So, you know, uh, so we can actually look at, and this is set to uh, today's date. So what you're seeing here is what the clouds would look like on today's date. So, and uh, any time there's, you know, we, every day we could, we could update this. So, for example, if you came out and there was a hurricane approaching Florida, we could update that and actually see the path of the hurricane and not only can we look at the cloud weather, but we also can look at the wind visualization. So, so we put can put the actually, wind barbs on like yeah, I do on my machine? Exactly, just like oh, we really are. And so what's, nice re- and green. what's really cool about this, though, is that it's, it's Earth, right? So you can see where everything yeah. all, all con- connected there. So you can see the low-pressure systems, the high-pressure systems, and all that. So it's always fun when there's a hurricane or a typhoon or a tropical storm. In, in the path, you can really see that really nice uh, wind velocity there or the speed of the wind. Um, but uh, uh, this one here is the ocean surf, uh, surface currents. Oh. Uh, and so we can, I can try, I could basically find Florida uh, even in the dark because we can look at the, um, the, outline. the, the Gulf, Gulf Stream. Yeah, the Gulf Stream. And uh, so we'll kind of fly around here and see if we can find it. Ah, there it is. There's the Gulf Stream Going right all there. the way to Europe. Yeah. You know, what we could do with our students is we can show them this, and then we can show them a 360 video of us scuba diving in the Gulf Stream so they can see what's going on. So what's really cool in the future, that's kind of the, a goal of mine for the next couple of years, is to build kind of realistic views of virtual reality experiences in the planetarium. You take this and you switch it from nighttime to daytime. Yes. So we're not looking for stars any longer. We're looking for... We're looking for home. That's I feel right. Like ET, take me home. Well, what's really cool about this is usually during my shows, you know, we 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 literally bring people back to the college, literally. Uh, and so what we can do here is we can kind of using the v, uh, Xbox controller, we can zoom down towards Florida, and we can basically fly down as if we're like in an airplane. So and we'll be able to download the the, the data sets here. And there's your high res coming on. Yeah, high res. There's nice. Lake. There's Lake Jessup. You can see the 417. 
And then, of course, you know, you can come down here, and right here is Seminole State College. So we can fly wow. down, and we can literally put you right by the parking lot um, right there. So that's, that's home base. And so people get really excited when we do this part. Well, if people want to come out, you say it's open to the public, and if they're not a student here, or they don't have official business here, but they want to come out as part of a public thing, how do they do that and where do they find out more? So basically all you have to do is visit our website, so seminalstate.edu slash planet, so they can go online and they can look at our schedule of events on our calendar. And so we have all the different shows that we have listed for the public, mm -hmm. as well as special events that we do. We not only do planetarium shows, but we also do special events where we set up telescopes outside or we do events where we have uh, you know, speakers and activities and things of that nature. But all that stuff can be found on our website um, and they can just find out, you know, all that from there. Derek, thank you for being on Talk to Tom. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for watching here on Talk to Tom. We love you, love you, love you. Remember, you can always submit your questions anytime on clickrelated.com slash talk to Tom. And we are always streaming and available for you on News 6 Plus. I'll see you next time.